go ahead and go to eclipse.org in your browser. Once you're there, go to Downloads and choose uh, this one right here, Eclipse IDE for Java Developers. So go ahead and choose uh, whichever uh, download that you need. I'll leave it up to you to learn from Eclipse from their install guide, uh, any details that you need to help you along. Now that you have Eclipse installed on your computer, navigate to where the program is and go ahead and open it. At this point, Eclipse will offer you uh, the choice on where you'd like to set up your workspace. Workspace is basically where Eclipse will save all of um, all of the projects that you create. You can set up different workspaces uh, to keep groups of projects separate, but for now just go with whatever default is offered to you. Now that we have Eclipse up and running, we'll want to create a new project to start programming in. You'll see over here is my uh, Project Explorer where I have several other, other projects that I've made. Um, but what we'll want to do is go here to this little plus icon for new. Uh, use the drop down and choose Java Project. And then we'll just go ahead and name our project. I'm going to call mine Instructions. And then go ahead and click Finish. And you'll notice it will appear over here with the rest of the projects. And there we have it right there. Now that we have our project added to Eclipse, uh, go ahead and expand this and you'll see this uh, little directory. This is a source directory. A source directory is where uh, the, the source code is for your program. What we want to do is be able to add uh, some code into this library somehow. And the way to do that, go ahead and right click on the source directory, go to new, and choose class. Now a class is basically a container for code in the simplest sense. So we will want to name our class. I'm just going to name it demo. It can be whatever you want. Convention is to start it with a capital letter though. And go ahead and click finish. And you'll notice that Eclipse uh, automatically opened it for us. So now we're ready to start adding code. The first thing that we'll want to add into our demo class, notice everything between this opening brace and this closing brace uh, will be inside of the class, is what is called the main method. Every program, when you start it, um, needs a entry point so that the, the operating system knows where to go to start executing your program. And this area is called the main method. So we'll go ahead and add one here. Um, just go ahead and type exactly what I have. We're going to do public static void main string brackets args not opening brace and once you hit return Eclipse will put a closing brace. Uh, you do not need to worry for a really long time what all this exactly means. Just know that inside of this uh, main method right here is when you start your program the computer is going to start at the first line in here and step line by line and follow the instructions that are contained in your program. We'll come back in a little while and work on our main method but right now we're going to add a helper method. We can write any number of methods that we want that can perform subtasks or subcalculations and um, break up the work into smaller pieces. So like before, we'll go ahead and start with public static. This time we'll do an int. And then we'll name our method. I'll call it summation int x and open bracket, closing bracket. Um, I'll explain just a little bit about this real quick so you can understand what's going on. If you're familiar much at all with math, you might have a function for x which equals x plus 1. So with this function, it's saying you provide any value for x, and what this function will return 
is whatever x was plus 1. So you provide a 3 to this function. What you will get back in return is 3 plus 1, so you get 4. You can look at a method the same way. So this is the name of our method. And it takes an integer, which is what that's saying, x. Java requires that all values are given a type, so it knows what is allowed to be stored in x. So if we want to pass a number for x, we need to say that x will be an integer. Uh, so just like this function, we give it something and it returns something. That's what this int is saying is that what this method is returning will also be an integer. So when this whole thing executes and is done, we will have given it an integer to work from and it will perform whatever calculation we want and it will return an integer in the end. Now to continue our work on our summation method, we want this to do something interesting, uh, perform a calculation. So what I'm going to want to do is uh, save the result of our calculation into some variable. So I'm going to call it result. So this is how you set up a variable. You say what type of data is going to be held in it. It's going to be an integer. And give it any name that, you're, that you desire. I'm calling it result equals. And then this can be any integer that you want. You can say it'll equal 6. Since we gave a value to x, we can use x anywhere in this method. So we could set it result equals x, but that's not very interesting. So what we'll do instead is use x in Gauss's formula, which calculates the summation from 1 to whatever x is. So using that, you can uh, use standard uh, math notation to write your formulas. So this is Gauss's formula. So this is saying that you take x times x plus 1 all divided by 2 and that will give us the summation from 1 to x. And this will be stored in a variable called result. So just like we're able to use x anywhere, the value for x, now we can use the value for result anywhere. Uh, all we simply want to do at this point is return whatever the result is so that we can use it elsewhere in our program. So it's just as simple as typing return and what you would like to return. Now that our summation method is complete, meaning that we can uh, input any value, perform our calculation, and get the value back when we're done, we're going to uh, come back up here to our main method. And just like down here, I'm going to want to uh, create a variable. I'm going to call it input equals, I'll just put 30. Now this is just a way for me to store the number that I want uh, the summation to be performed on. So this is what the number that you'll play with when everything is done. This is the only thing you'll have to change later uh, to see the summation of any positive integer. Now to put our method to a little bit of use. Anytime you want to use a method, you can just go ahead and type uh, the name of the method. So the summation. And you can give it a value for x, whatever you want to put in there. Since we're saving our value in this variable input, we'll just go ahead and put input right there. So now when we start our program, it'll come down here, assign 30 into this input variable. It'll call summation, giving it whatever value was for input. So x would get 30, and it would perform the calculation and return the result. But since we are returning a result, we don't want to just lose it here, so we better save it into a variable so that we can later use result and see what our output was from the calculation. 
now that we're able to store the result of the summation, um, we'll want to be able to view the result in some way. The most basic way to do this is just to print the text directly to the console. I'll show you what that means a little bit later, but how you do that is you type system.out.print Oops. A little typo. System.out.print and this is also like a method. It takes any type of value. So if we give it result, that's what it will print to our console. And this right down here is a console window where we will see that result later. Now that our program is entirely written and supposedly ready to go, uh, what we'll want to do is, is uh, just visually step through the logic of our program to see if it makes sense what is going to take place, make sure that we really do have our, our flow of, of logic uh, correctly ordered. This is just a good mental exercise and good practice to start is really being able to look at your program and see what is going to go on without actually running it and just seeing the result, actually walk through it in your mind. So when we run our program, the operating system will look for this main method and where to start the program. From there, our program will take over, start line by line. It will come to this line, find something to do. It will say sign 30 to this variable called input. So now input will equal 30. Come down here, look at this line, pass 30 into our summation method. So let's come down here to our summation method. So x will be 30, that's what we gave it. And then we'll come down here to the first workable line. So we'll have 30 times 31 all divided by 2, store that into this variable called result. And whatever that is, return result. We'll come back up here. Summate this entire thing has just returned this value, and we're storing it in this variable called result. So now result will equal, obviously, the result. That's why I named it that. And then we'll come down here to this method, which is able to print text to our console and we'll print result. Now that everything is ready to go, you'll notice this little asterisk here saying that nothing is saved. So we can go ahead and save it. Let's file save. If you don't know how to do this, then I'd be kind of worried for you. Um, and once that's good, if once you want to run your program, just simply come up here and hit this little play button. It's the run button. So we're going to input 30, and we should see the result of that summation right down here in our console window. So go ahead and run it. That equals 465. So we supposedly have a accurate running program, but let's verify this with a different input, which is something that we always like to do is test different things. A uh, more predictable one. Uh, 10 is really easy to do because 10 times 11 is 110 divided by 2 is 55. So now when we save and run this, we should expect to see 55 as our result. That is correct. Let's do some bigger numbers. This one's taking a little bit more time to build the program. That's also correct. And just for kicks, let's just uh, throw some prime number in there. And that's the result of our summation. So we have a Correct, accurate, running, and simple Java program.